Hello, in the last videos we looked at some functions for cleaning uh, data with pandas. Now we'll go over to um, how you can analyze data with pandas. Okay, first off, there are different data types and you probably already know these from um, statistics if you have done the statistics course so far. If you haven't, I will quickly go over these four different levels and briefly explain uh, what this means. Um, yeah, so the first um, yeah, the first level is called nominal, and these are just categories without any order, and uh, there's a limited amount of uh, measures you can compute on them. Um, for example, you could compute the mode, which is just the, uh, the element that occurs most often, or the absolute and relative frequencies of the different objects, and yeah, that's pretty much everything there is. So um, yeah, just categories without an order, um, just like colors, for example. And second one is the ordinal level, and this is quite similar to the nominal level, but now the order has meaning. And this means that, um, for example, two elements have an order, to uh, have a defined order, um, such as school grades. So they have, um, depending on where you are, um, a different amount of grades, which are categorical, but still have an ordering. So there's a good grade and a less good grade. And uh, yeah, there are more measures, statistical measures you can compute in them. Um, like, for example, cumul cumulative frequencies, medians, or the quantiles um, of the respective uh, categories. Then the third one uh, is the interval level. And here you have um, some numerical data already. So um, yeah, this is basically um, data for which you can compare intervals between um, one another. So it doesn't have to be uh, that you can compare two absolute values and this is not given for the interval level but you're able to um, yeah, compare the size for example of two different intervals that you have uh, in your data. And um, on the interval level you can compute the mean and standard deviation for example and um, yeah, one example for this is uh, for example the temperature in Celsius um, where you don't really have like a defined zero. Um, you could also look at the temperature in Fahrenheit, for example, and there you have a different zero, but um, yeah, you can still compare the, um, the intervals between uh, two scales. And then the last one, the fourth level, is the ratio level. And uh, now these are uh, numerical values where you have a specific zero point, and you can also compare absolute values um, of, of your data. And uh, this would, for example, include the mass uh, or the size of some object. And um, yeah, there's a defined zero mass, for example, an object that doesn't have any mass. And you can compare um, your, your data in, in many different ways. And so uh, these, these levels build on top of each other. And with each level, you can uh, yeah, compute more statistical measures. OK. Um, You've seen the ratio level uh, so far. Uh, this is the most common one, I guess, um, as well as the interval level. Um, but the, the nominal and ordinal level uh, can also be quite useful. And uh, there are lots of applications where you have uh, categories in your data and you want to compute some measures on them um, and just represent them in a more uh, sensible way such that you can incorporate this um, concept of nominal or uh, ordinal data types uh, into your pandas data frames. Okay, so uh, this video will be concerned with categorical data, both nominal and ordinal. And um, yeah, there are some advantages for uh, incorporating these uh, statistical scales into your data frames. Um, so for example, if we create this series here, um, it just has some, some strings here in there. Um, we can have a look at how big this object actually is in memory. So we can look at the number of bytes of this series and it tells us that the series has 48 bytes. So yeah, this is quite okay, I guess. For um, the small series, it doesn't really matter. Um, but again, this is just an example. And if you have large data sets, it might matter a lot if you have um, like 48 bytes for uh, such a few values or um, yeah, or less. 
and we can actually achieve less bytes necessary for uh, for the same amount of information if we just specify the dtype um, and set it to category. So if we do this, then pandas will know that um, yeah it should create a nominal scale uh, for this data. And now we can see if we print this, it says it has three categories uh, of the data type object and the categories are A, B and C. And now if we have a look at the number of bytes that this data, uh, that this series takes up, it's just 30. So we saved 18 bytes here and this can make um, quite a big difference because this will and this difference will uh, also increase with uh, with more values so the more values you have in a series um, the more of a difference it makes all right so under the hood um, these categories are saved in this cat attribute and if we have a look at the categories inside this cat object then um, yeah we get this index uh, object which tells us we have these three categories, A, B, and C, and they're of data type object. And behind that, we uh, have a different index for these categories. Um, internally, they are represented as integers, and we can look at these integers uh, with the attribute codes. So inside this cat object, uh, the category object, uh, we have these codes, and the codes are just integers mapped to these uh, categories for each of the row in our series. Okay, uh, this cat object also has um, an attribute called ordered and right now this is false and this tells us that this is a nominal scale and not an ord ordinal scale. But um, yeah, we'll come to how you can uh, make ordinal scales later. All right, so we can also rename these categories. And if we have a look here, the categories are called A, B and C. And then if we just call rename categories on this cat object, and pass a list of new names, then it will replace the names. And um, yeah, here we get the series. So this will uh, copy the series and rename the categories. And here we get them as yeah, the new names X, Y, and Z. Then if you want to create this series um, and have some more control over it, then you can use the uh, pd.categorical object. Uh, so if you call the constructor of that, you can pass um, some values to that. So the first list here is just um, a list of values that should be inside the series. Then you have uh, a list of categories, and then you can also specify that if this should be ordered or not. And this will determine if it will be a nominal or ordinal uh, scale series. And yeah, this will just give us um, a categorical object. And then we can use this categorical object and just pass it, uh, pass it to the constructor of the series object. And this will give us a categorical series. In this case, it's not ordered, and um, yeah, it has the values A, B, C, and again an A. So we have three categories. Um, yeah. Then next up, um, we want to create ordered categories um, and have a look at um, yeah, what we can do with unordered categories as well. So first of all, um, with unordered categories um, like this one, uh, we just create a new one. Um, we can, for example, compare if two unordered category, uh, unordered series are equal. And this is an element-wise equal. And this will tell us true if the elements are equal and false otherwise. You already know this from the um, normal series in pandas or in data frames as well. Um, this should be familiar already. And then um, what you already seen ha uh, already have seen as well is comparing um, yeah, two series with a greater sign. So this should also be element wise, but this will not work for unordered data. So this will throw us an error and tells us unordered categoricals can only compare equality or not. So this uh, is what we've done before. We've compared equality, but we cannot compare something as greater or less because there's no order in unordered categoricals. Okay, so if we have a look, um, we still have our values A, B, C, A, and then um, what I've said before is that we can compute the mode for a nominal uh, data. The mode is just the object which appears most often. And yeah, in this case, this is A. And we can't, um, yeah, we cannot compute the maximum because again, there is no ordering and it doesn't know which of the, um, of which of the categories is like more or less than another one. And uh, yeah, don't get confused with mode and maximum. The mode is just 
Um, this just counts how often a category appears in the data. The maximum looks at um, what the value of this category is. So for nominal data, we don't have a value for each, um, yeah, for each category, but for ordered data, this will be important. Okay, and uh, yeah, just quickly uh, a note: this uh, these scales only apply for the series object themselves. So the elements inside the series don't have anything to do with um, like the scale. It only becomes a statistical uh, like scaled data frame or series if you have the whole series. So if we just take one element, um, yeah, this is just a, a string, and um, we can also compare these. So if we take two of these elements, um, we can just compare them with a smaller sign, and this will not throw an error because the individual elements are still strings and not um, some categorical type. Okay, now to create um, ordered a series, so have an ordinal scale, we again yes, use this categorical object, we pass um, yeah, some values to this and the categories, and we set the ordered parameter to true. So now we have an ordered series, and you can already see here that it now tells us that B is smaller than C, and C is smaller than A, and A is smaller than D. Okay, and we just create another um, ordered series so we can um, yeah, do operations with both of them. And these, uh, this one has some different values, but it has the same um, categories and the same ordering for the categories. Okay, and now we can actually compare um, these two series using the greater operator. And uh, this tells us that the first um, element of the uh, ordered series is greater than the first element of the ordered series number two. Um, yeah, and this um, cannot be done with the nominal data, but uh, this is something that the ordered, the ordinal data um, can now do for us. Yeah, additionally, we can also compute the maximum now, and um, we do this on the first um, series here, so it's this one. And if we have a look here, uh, we have the values A, B, C, and A. And um, D would be the maximum category, but there's no D in our data, so the maximum of our data is A, because A is the highest, um, yeah, the highest category in our ranking. Okay, and um, as before, we can still compare uh, the equality of these two uh, series, just as with the nominal data. All right, I've said before that um, ordinal data allows us to compute the median, and um, right now this does not work directly, so we can't call um, um, just median on this. Uh, I can also show this if we just um, yeah use the series and call dot median, then this will uh, say we get a type error, and um, we cannot perform the operation median on this. And this is because um, for um, for this data set which has four values, uh, it would have to compute the average of two values because the me median value would be in the middle of the middle two objects, so right between this B and the C, this would be the median, and Pandas has no way of uh, computing the the average, the mean, of two categories, of two strings, and this is not defined, and this is why we can't directly call median on this, but to get around this we can call, medians, uh, call median on the codes, so use the integer representation of our categories, and if we do this, we get 1.5, which is now um, yeah, the value between B and C. And as you can see on the index here, um, 1.5 is between one and two. So this is our median index, basically. All right, then um, furthermore, uh, we again create this um, series object here. And now we would like to uh, convert this series object into a categorical series object. And um, so far we've only uh, used the categorical object and passed that to the series uh, constructor. But now we want to um, take an existing series which is not categorical and turn that into a categorical um, yeah, series. So for that we have to import this special, um, special data type from the pandas API types submodule. And um, yeah, this data type is called categorical data D type and uh, we can use this this is a class again to um, yeah, create a data type object. 
um, with our um, specificities that we want uh, it to have. So here we have to set the categories and um, if it should be ordered or not. And um, we, we set the categories to just be a list and we want this to be ordered. And note here that we don't specify any values because this should just be a D type, so a data type and not actually a series object or something that contains values. So if we create this, we get this categorical dtype object and it tells us that it has these categories B, C and A and is actually ordered. And then we can use the S type function, uh, which you already know from NumPy and the previous lecture in Pandas. And we can use uh, S type and pass this new data type, which you created up here. And now we have a categorical series and um, yeah, this is ordered as we specified here and has the categories B, C and A. Okay, now to uh, work with some more like sensible data, um, there is not that much of a toy example. Um, I'd like to load this uh, Titanic data set and this contains some data on uh, the people who were on the Titanic. And uh, yeah, it just has some, some general information about um, like for example, which which class they were in, or um, what what price they paid for the ticket, and so on. And this data comes from uh, the Kaggle website. And if you don't know the Kaggle website, and you're interested in machine learning or data science, you should definitely check this out. Um, this contains lots of data sets and even competitions. Um, and yeah, this is a great way to learn something, look at other people's code, and get familiar with um, just different data sets, different tasks. Um, there's lots to see here. And yeah, this um, also has this Titanic data set, which is uh, like a, an, a hello world example kind of for data science and machine learning. Okay, uh, we've already downloaded this uh, data set as a CSV, and then we can just use the uh, read CSV function and load this data set. And if we look at the head here, you can see uh, the different columns and some values uh, we have. And um, yeah, we'll use this uh, data set for the remaining lecture. Um, yeah, just to have some data to, to do examples with. All right, so if we have a look at the D types of our data set, uh, you can see that some of them are integers, some of them are objects. Uh, we also have some floats. And um, yeah, none of them are categorical. So by default, Pandas will not include uh, categorical data, but it will just um, use them as objects or um, numerical data. But it probably would make sense to have some of these as um, yeah, categorical um, columns, since for example, this embarked, um, these are only three different values. So this is the port where uh, the person embarked on uh, onto the Titanic. And there is a limited amount of, um, yeah, of ports, they're just three, and they don't really have an ordering. You could argue that they have an ordering based on where the Titanic went first or last and so on. But then, um, yeah, for example, if you have a look at the sex, then um, there's no ordering there. So we have two sexes here, and um, yeah, we would like to create uh, a categorical um, scale out of that. Okay. So first of all, um, we want to have a look at how, like, what the what the data looks like in here, and um, we have to specify this include parameter in the describe function um, to include the object data as well, because by default the describe function will only look at um, numerical data and not at object data. So you already know the describe function from from last week, and this just tells us um, some. Yeah, some basic information about our uh, columns. And you can see here, uh, since we now have object data and we included them, it created these new rows of unique top and frequency. And um, yeah, it inserted some um, some values for our, um, yeah, for our object data, while for our object data, um, the rest of the rows here are zero, uh, and NAN values, not zero. And this is because um, we can't, for example, compute the standard deviation of, of a name or of a set of names. So this is why object data needs some different, um, yeah, some different statistics and not the normal ones that are used for numerical data. Okay, so what we want to do is 
use this embark port, which is just represented as one letter in our data set, in our data frame, and um, make this like a long name. And um, yeah, for that we want to create this um, mapping data frame first. And here we have um, two columns, and the column for the first column is embarked, which is called the same as in our original data frame. And then we have uh, embarked long, which is the uh, name of the city um, where the port is located. And it is important that uh, this first column is called the same as uh, the column yeah, that we want to match it with, um, because um, yeah, for the for this matching. Um, or for this mapping of um, single letter port to long string, um, we need the same uh, the same name here. Okay, and we can uh, map do this mapping using uh, merge uh, using the merge function, and I will talk about this merge function uh, later on. And um, for now, it's just um, yeah, you can just think of it as taking um, taking the values from our embarked column here and looking up which um yeah which value it has then taking this uh, new data frame and matching uh, it with this embarked long value and then adding uh, this embarked long value to our original data frame so if we do this you can see that now we have this new column embarked long and there's a mapping between uh, the the single letter part and the long long name okay and you can see this embarked long is again an object and um, still not a category. So how do we uh, make a category out of that? Um, yeah, we first can have a look at our objects. Um, when we look at the unique objects in the embarked long column, we can see we only have these three values. And um, yeah, we would like to make this a categorical um, column now. And uh, yeah, this is quite easy. We can just call the s type function again on our column here and uh, specify the type as category and uh, then we use this uh, yeah this column with the new type and um, assign this to the column in our original data frame then if we look at um, this column so the head of the column now um, you can see that this is categorical it tells us that it has three categories um, which are the three cities here and now if we look at the d-types, you can see embarked long is now a category. And um, yeah, this is what we wanted. And um, yeah, just just a quick note, um, the categorical data takes, um, a, well, this is described in the same way as object data. So if we call the describe function, then this will look the same as um, for object data. And it will use the same uh, measures here and uh, not use the numerical ones.